Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys some hotkey techniques with regards to trim functionality in DaVinci Resolve, and also cover dynamic trim mode and how you can use that as an alternate way to trim and edit your clips. So all of the functions I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial are basically going to be reliant on the J, K, and L hotkeys. So without having anything selected, when you hit L on your keyboard, it's actually going to take the timeline cursor and track that forwards. So you can hit L twice if you want it to go in times two speed or three times or more to keep doubling on top of that. So likewise, you can go in reverse by hitting the J key, double J key to go at times two speed in reverse. And if you want to stop it, you hit the K key. However, when you have a clip selected, the center point between two clips selected or the left and right sides of those center points selected, the functionality is going to change when you use J, K and L in combination with the control key. So if we hit B to cut this one clip into a bunch of other clips, we can uh, go ahead and use that just to test these functions out. So if you are in selection mode, which can be A on the keyboard, and you select a clip and hit Control J, it is going to move a clip over to the left. Anything it covers when you hit the space bar or the K key is basically going to be overridden, just because the clip now is resting on top of the other ones. But anything you pass over completely is going to still remain behind uh, as long as the final position doesn't stop where the clip is. It's not going to be overwritten. But if you stop it over another clip, that's going to overwrite that. Now, if you hit T to go into trim mode before you do this, it's going to roll over the clips instead. So if I hit Control J, what you'll notice is that the clip to the right is going to fill the dead space as the selected clip moves over to the left. And if I get control L, it's going to move to the right with the same kind of function there. Note that you're limited by the duration of the clips to the left and the right. In this mode, you can't actually go over the left hand or the right hand clip. Now with this technique, and uh, I think pretty much all of the ones I'm going to cover, you can also do this with multiple clips. So if you wanted to move or roll three clips at the same time, and then you could hit control J in selection mode in order to move them all over to the left or hit T to go into trim mode, hit control J, and it's actually gonna roll it along the timeline while the clip to the opposite side of the moving direction is going to fill in the dead space. Okay, now if you happen to click on the center point between two clips, so right here, and then you hit control J or control L, it's going to do that same rolling function as trim mode for the clip, um, but it's going to actually move the center point and the clips to either side are going to fill in the information as appropriate. So basically by moving the center point to the right, the clip on the left becomes longer as long as it has information to fill that space. And it will go ahead and do so. Now this happens regardless of whether you're in selection mode or trim mode. So if I am in trim mode and I hit control J going the reverse direction, it does exactly the same thing. Now something that's pretty subtle to notice, if you actually click on the left side or the right side of the clip, basically selecting the right bound or the left bound, not the center point, then the functionality actually changes quite a lot. So if we are in trim mode and we have the left or right point selected and we hit control J or control L, it's actually going to ripple with that center point. So if I hit control L, it's going to be expanding the duration of the clip that's on the side, but it's actually going to be pushing the clips in front of it forward rather than overwriting it. So likewise, if I do the same thing in reverse, control J, it's going to be shrinking this clip while pulling any clips in front of it over to the left. Now this pretty much works the same way if you are clicking on the right hand side, except that the clip that's going to be selected is pretty much changed. So the clip that's on the side where you have the right or left selected is the one that's going to be affected. So if I hit control J now, it's going to be uh, taking information from the left side video clip and pushing everything in front of it forward. So note that the direction changes depending on whether you're on the left or the right side. And if I hit control L, it's going to be pulling in this left hand side and also pulling any clips in front of it in the timeline over to the left with it. Now, if we happen to be in selection mode instead, then what's going to happen is it's going to adjust the length of the clip that we are basically on the side of without rippling any of the clips to the left or the right over. So if I hit control J, you'll see that it basically just pushes over the clips to the left, uh, overriding it and expands the length of this clip. But if we hit control L, it's going to be shrinking this clip, but no other clip basically fills in the black space automatically. So now we can talk about dynamic trim mode, which is another way you can 
do this kind of functionality and you may prefer it. So if we click on dynamic trim mode or hit W on the keyboard, uh, what's going to happen is the timeline cursor will show in yellow. It'll automatically move to the nearest center point and you can hit space bar in order to basically preview about a second before and after the center point uh, to see how the two clips are going to match up against each other. So I'll hit play here and basically you can see that the cut there is really rough and it if you were trying to link up two clips, and of course this is actually the same clip I'm editing, just two different cuts of it, then you would be able to see really glaringly the flaws so that you can match them up better. So if you are in dynamic trim mode, uh, the function of the JKL keys changes a bit. So if you click on a center point now between two clips and you hit J or L, it's going to move the point location uh, basically over to the left and over to the right. So if you move the center point over to the left then the clip on the right is going to fill the space that overrides the clip on the left and vice versa. So if I hit J here, you'll see that that kind of rolls over. Of course, it stops if it gets to the end of the left bound clip and we can hit L to go the other direction. It'll also stop as you can see here if uh, the clip that's expanding actually runs out of footage. Now, if you are in trim edit mode, note that that is distinct from dynamic trim mode. These are two separate things, but you're also in dynamic trim mode and you click on the left or right side of the points and you start hitting J or L. And uh, just a reminder, when you're in dynamic trim mode, you don't need the control key. You just hit J or L. Uh, then it is going to ripple the points over. So if I hit J here, you'll see it's going to basically shrink this left side clip while pulling all the clips to the right over. And it can basically do the same thing by hitting L on the keyboard, expanding the current clip and pushing everything over to the right with that rippling function. Now, however, if you are in selection mode and you do this, it is not going to do the rippling function. It's simply going to resize the clip on the side that you are working with. So if I click on the left side here, this clip over here is just going to resize when I hit J or L. So J is going to pull that right side center point over to the left. And if I hit L, it's going to be the same thing in reverse. Note that if you click on the right side of a clip like this, then the directions reverse once again. So J is going to be pulling it to the left. Now, if you're in dynamic trim mode and you click on a video clip, and you hit J or L on the keyboard, it's going to be doing that move the same as uh, just normally in selection mode when you hit Control J or L. So if I hit L here, you can see it's going to move that clip on the timeline. J, it's going to move in reverse as well. You don't need the Control key anymore. And that occurs whether you are in slide or slip mode for the dynamic trim mode. So I haven't touched on that yet, but if we right click on the dynamic trim mode, you can see that there's actually two separate modes here, slip and slide. So this matters when you are in a trim mode and dynamic trim mode. So if you have slide selected with a clip in trim mode, it's basically going to do a move and ripple of the underlying clips. So let's make sure we're in slide here. You can hit S key on your keyboard to toggle between slip and slide, by the way, as a shortcut. And so if we're in slide mode and we hit L, it's going to take this clip here and slide it over to the right. We can do the same thing, hitting J going in reverse. No, it's still limited by the left hand and the right hand side maximums. But if we hit S to go into slip mode, then it's going to not move the position of the video clip, but it's actually just going to change which parts of the source material are going to show in the frame for this timeline. So if I hit L here, you'll see it's going to kind of slip the video information over to the right as long as there is video information to use. And uh, we can hit J to go in reverse, um, basically pulling information from the right and pushing any information out from the left. So using that, you can get the exact start and end clips that you want. And uh, also note that while you're doing that, you can see multiple previews up here at the top. So in a nutshell, that's most of the functionality that you can get using hotkeys for trim techniques on your keyboard and what you can do with dynamic trim mode, which they added, I believe, in DaVinci Resolve 15. So hopefully you guys got something out of this video, a few useful shortcuts for you guys to use and play around with. Uh, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.